When you get to a certain level in this business, if you don't fight for yourself, you ain't getting nowhere. You're not with AEW anymore. My decision to leave AEW came well before my injury. I was just burnt out. You never won the AEW Tag Team Championships. The reason I was given was that there was too many other people fighting for that spot. Falling out with Ortiz. I think we just grew apart. I wanted more for the tag team. Our visions just weren't the same. Do you not want to be a tag team wrestler anymore? No. I dedicated half of my career to the tag team. I think it's only right that I dedicate the next 10, 12 years to myself. Would you go back to TNA? Everything is on the table. It's been a while. So, so good to see you, man. <laughs> Likewise, man. And thank you for making the trip out here. Hell yeah, hell yeah. LA is beautiful. It's so. it's, it's nice this time of year, hell right? Hell yeah, you, hell yeah. I got off the plane and I was like, let's go. <laughs> like, I could get used to 75 degrees and sunny. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, New York, New York is starting to warm up a little bit, but like we're in that transition of it's like... It's nice for like two days and then it's freezing for like three days. And so it's up and down right now. So. New York's always been home for you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Born you're, and raised. You're like through and through a New york a New york New york New york Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, born and raised. Uh, I'm the only one like left. <laughs> Everybody else is, has gone. And, you know, I'm, for me, uh, you know, uh, Coming into wrestling, I always knew that I wanted to represent New York and, and do something special with that. And also, uh, I've never left because, you know, I, I look out for my grandparents and, and I spend a lot of time with them. And, um, you know, they're getting up there in age. So me being close, family is everything for me. So me being close to them and, um, yeah, that who's, means a lot. Who's around your neck here? This is my dad. Wow. Yeah, my dad uh, passed away four years ago. So uh, January 2020. Wow. Yeah, New but Year's Day. He's right there next to your heart all the time. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. It was like five years ago, I think, when we did our last interview. Mm -hmm. A lot has changed since In a then. hotel room. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, In a hotel yeah. room. I think it was Chicago. Yep, yep. Yeah, a lot's changed since then. Absolutely. Uh, I guess the biggest thing is you're not with AEW anymore. I am not. Yeah, so what was the decision to not resign or what ended up happening with AEW? Well, uh, like I was telling you, um, my decision to to leave AEW came well before my um, my injury. Actually, I got hurt in June of 2022, and at that point, I was just dealing with so much in my life, personally and professionally, at work. Um, and I was just burnt out. Like I, my contract was coming up in September, I believe. And I had already made a decision that I'm not going to resign and I'm going to just, I need to take a break and deal with the things that I needed to deal with. And, um, yeah. So, and then the injury happened. So that was, uh, a lot, a lot was going on during that time. Did they for me personally? Did they want to resign you in September? Like, was that an, an offer that was made to you? Uh, I'm not sure, but I I wasn't really actively pursuing. Oh, are you like the time was coming up? Like I said, it was uh, June. I got hurt. Our contract was up August, I think. Yeah, because you guys uh, debuted at All Out. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Five the years. end of August. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't really like actively pursuing, oh, are you guys going to resign us? Because already in my head, I was like, yeah, I need to get away. I need to take a break. Um, but I'm sure something would have worked out and, and, you know, they probably would have uh, resigned us. Um, but yeah, man, during that time, it was just it was a, a very dark time for me. What like, was what was going on? Um, unhappiness personally and in, in my life uh, outside of wrestling and then it, professionally things weren't really going good um I was miserable to say the least I was unhappy um you know my partnership was falling apart um things at work just weren't like it, a lot of things were just very stagnant and I'm the type that I'm, I'm like a go-getter and I'm very goal oriented. And, and, um, again, like in this business, I treat it as such, I treat it as a business. And if you're not, um, striving to be at the top and to, you know, be a champ and, and, you know, grow yourself, then what are you doing? Right. And that's with anything I feel like, um, 
but also I was also dealing with uh, like my addiction issues during that time. At that point, they were they were getting pretty bad. And then the injury, like when the injury happened, I remember it happened and laying there in the ring and I was like, damn, I got hurt. But like, thank God I got hurt. Mm. Yeah, it was it was a weird time. <laughs> so you're selling it's, it's a year, right? Since you've a been year clean? sober. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank wow. you. What's the date? February 16th. OK, so that was just about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. What was the moment for you when you went, I, I need to get clean? <sighs> I knew it was getting bad because um, I wasn't coming home. And I would be out for days. And um, Christmas was coming up. And every year, my daughter always wrote her Christmas list to Santa. And um, in her list, uh, one of the only things on her list was uh, that she wanted daddy to stop. And um, And then my grandmother wrote me a letter. And uh, my grandmother has always been like a, a savior of mine in my life. And, uh, you know, growing up, I had a pretty rough childhood. And she, um, she showed me that there was more to life than just like trauma and, and a lot of the bullshit I was going through. And um, and she's always been a savior of mine. And seeing that I was like causing her pain, mm. especially after my dad had passed away, and um, and then my daughter and her mom. It was like you know when you're an addict, you think you're just hurting yourself. And you don't see the others around you that are, that are hurting, you know, so. Well, here you are on the other side of it. And yeah, man. you should be really proud of yourself for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What was it? Was it alcohol? Was it pills? What was the main thing you struggled with? It was alcohol and other stuff. Yeah. But here you are on the other side of it. Yeah, man. And like one day being sober was probably a big accomplishment. Yep. Then one week. Yep. Then a month. Yep. And here you are, and, and it's every day, right? Oh yeah, and I don't, I don't like, you know. And, and here you are I, a year later. I heard, uh, I heard Eddie Guerrero say this. He was like, "You can't overwhelm yourself with the thoughts of shit. I got to be sober for the rest of my life. That's way too overwhelming. Mm. You know, it's just for today. Today I'm not gonna drink. Today I'm not gonna do drugs. And then it's like that the next day, and the next day, and it just builds up, you know, <laughs> until you just build time, right? I asked Jake the snake, uh, Jake Roberts, I said, how long were you an addict? And he goes, I'm still an addict. Yep. And that hit, that hit hard because yep. I was like, oh, it's a, it's a daily thing. Mm -hmm. It's a daily decision. Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking, I'm not going to re-sign with AEW, did you think about, once I get everything cleaned up in my personal life, once I get this figured out, did mm -hmm. you think about what was going to be next for your career? Um, I mean, at that time, uh, back when I got hurt, I was just thinking of like, I need to get out of here. Like, I need to get away from this. I need to figure my life out. I need to, like, I wasn't even thinking, all right, once I get everything situated, I'll come back. I'll, you know, do what I got to do. I was just like so overwhelmed with everything and so unhappy and dealing with, you know, because like when my dad passed away, you know, I, I've, I've always lived my life in survival mode. Right. Uh, it was something I just got used to. So my entire life was just like constant guard up, constant, uh, just surviving day by day. And um, and there was a lot of things that I went through as a kid and experience that I held inside because I 
I wasn't really taught to speak about these things. I wasn't, uh, you know, my mom, you know, because of the things that were going on and for her to protect us and, and make sure that everything would be, she always would be like, yo, whatever happens at home stays at home. You know, we don't talk about this. So I grew up with that. I was like, yo, whatever I deal with, I deal with it on my own and keep it pushing. Uh, and um, so, yeah, I held on to a lot of things from my childhood and, and uh, things that I never really dealt with and spoke about. And, uh, you know, when that stuff builds up, it's like a soda bottle when you shake it up, you know, and eventually something will happen and, and it'll explode. And that's what happened when my dad died. You know, my dad died and everything just came to the service. We'll get back to the conversation in just a second. So every year I put it on my bucket list to learn a new skill. This year I'm learning a new language. I'm learning Spanish thanks to Babbel. Babbel is the science-based language learning app that actually works. And it works because it's designed by real people for real conversations that you'd actually have. So I probably should have learned Spanish a long time ago. I mean, I moved to Miami in 2014. I live in California now. I hear it all the time. And the cool thing about Babbel is they're giving you these tips and tricks that are actually based in like real world situations. They're not just giving you random words to learn. So they're giving you real words that you can use in an actual conversation. So I'm only a few weeks into this, but it's working for me and I know it's gonna work for you too. So if learning a new language was on your bucket list for 2024 or ever on your bucket list, check out this special limited time deal. When you go to babbel.com slash CVV, you'll get 50% off your one-time payment for a lifetime membership. That's 50% off when you go to babbel.com slash CVV. B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash CVV rules and restrictions apply. When you say you're in survival mode your whole life, then you get signed by AEW in 2019. Mm -hmm. You're offered, I'm sure, more money than you had ever made in your career as a wrestler. Mm -hmm. Did things not change there? Does it not put things in perspective of like, okay, like everything I've worked for, it's, it's starting to pay off now? It did, but I was still living in survival mode. Mm. And it was, it was, it was crazy. I, I, like I realize it now looking back it's like there was a lot of things that I didn't really get to enjoy because I was constantly like in that survival mode where it's like I'm waiting for the next shoe to drop. Okay, I got signed, I got a great contract, I'm on TV, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I've traveled the world, I've wrestled in MSG, I've freaking, you know, all over the country, everything, all these things and I never really took a moment to like reflect and be like, damn. So there's never a moment you were able to sit there and just appreciate what's happening? It happened recently. Really? What was it? When uh, I think it was like right before going into rehab where um, When my daughter's mom, she she was, you know, talking to me and like getting on my ass about things. And, and she was like, yo, have you not realized what you've done in your life? She was like, you're a poor Puerto Rican kid from New York. And you got to see the world and you got to uh, accomplish things that, you know, look at your friends who you grew up with. A lot of them aren't even around. Um, and then she's like, here you are, ready to piss it all away. And then <laughs> I, uh, I went in and I remember sitting at the window in my room and going through detox was the worst experience of my life. I think if there's anything, that's what's going to keep me away from like <laughs> drugs and alcohol is that experience, man. Cause I didn't realize how bad I was until I went through that. Mm. I was like, what did I do to myself? And I remember going through detox and staring out that window and just like shivering and, and like feeling like, like I'm not even human. And uh, I was like, yo, what am I doing? Like what? Look where I'm at. Mm. Look at all the shit that I've done. You know, like, yeah, and it was like that moment. I was like, yo, this is it. I have to, I got to get better. I was there to... a, a moment with what you guys were doing where you realized, 
we are one of the hottest tag teams in the world. And when we took those masks off. <laughs> the AEW debut. When we... Because we had uh, wrestled the MSG, and my whole family was there. My dad was there, and uh, it was against the Lucha Bros. And we had a crazy run with the Lucha Bros. We wrestled them about 24 times in a year all over the world. Crazy. And uh, I remember my dad, I, I went to the front of the garden to give my family the tickets, and my dad pulls me to the side, and he's like... Yo, it's crazy because my dad took me to my first garden show. When I was four years old. Do you remember who was on the? the Hell card? yeah, I do. <laughs> it was it was a tag match. It was uh, what was it? It was like '95. It was uh, it was Brett. Who was it? It was Brett, Sean, Yokozuna, and somebody else. It was like a tag match house show. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> It was insane. My dad actually still had the program. Wow. And he carried it around with him in his pocket. I found that out when he passed away. I was cleaning out his place and I went in his closet. I'm going through his jackets and I found the program in one of his jackets that he always wore. Wow. So he carried that with him all the time. Wow. But uh, yeah, we're in front of the garden and he's like, isn't it crazy that uh, all those years ago, I brought you to see all your favorite wrestlers and now I'm here to see my favorite wrestler. Bruh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that AEW debut at All Out was, that was yeah. special. Yeah, it I, was. I was in the crowd there, I remember. Yeah. First of all, how do you decide what president you're going to be? Yo, I don't know. <laughs> I just know that we were, that weekend, we were doing some indie shows in Chicago, and we were in the hotel room on a Patrick Swayze kick, <laughs> and Point Break came on. Yes. And I was like, yo. That's it. Because we were trying to figure out, all right, how are we going to do this? Like, what are we going to, you know? And I was like, we got to do, because, you know, we always wore the dead president's face paint. We we started doing that at, at Impact. And then I was like, man, we got to do something kind of similar, but like different. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah, Point Break came on and I was like, <laughs> that's it right there. And uh and yeah, we it was just random. It was like, all right, Kennedy and and I think Clinton or and whatever. I'm sure they were like, okay, here's all the presidents you can't be. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, <that laughs> everybody great... else is fair game, but you can't be. I think I think the the choice of presidents, the, those were the only ones at the store. Honestly, oh, okay. so I was like, all right, well, Clinton is from like our childhood and stuff. So I'll never forget the call from Excalibur because you guys take off the mask. It's Santana and Ortiz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the crowd yeah. knew exactly who you guys it was, were. I think that was it, you know, because we like people watched Impact. Like we were doing some cool stuff and but like we still were like, oh, are they going to know who we are? And that's always that's everybody's like reaction. Right. It doesn't I don't care who you are. Yeah. That's all. Are they going to react? Are they going to, you know, know who I am? And that was that was it. And we were like, I remember we're standing under the stage and it's dark. And uh, I, I look over at my partner and, and I'm like, yo, it's going to be crickets. Watch. <laughs> it's going to be crickets. <laughs> and uh, he's like, yup. And so we were ready for that already. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, man, we we took those masks off and I could feel it go from my feet all the way up to my head, like that roar. It was like, unlike anything I've ever experienced. It was, you know, cause it, it like, it rose it was just like, I don't know. We took those masks off and it was like, oh, it's on. And what a unique time, right? Like at that point for AEW, because I think that was only the third pay-per-view. Yep. They hadn't even started TV yet. Yep. Yep. So it's like you had Double or Nothing, you had Fight Fighter Fest, or I think the it was fight, uh, fight for the Fallen, or whatever it was. I think I was it I, Fighter Fighter Fest. I think fight, yeah. Well, I think it was like that fourth one. Then. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah, all yeah, yeah. out. So it was like the the momentum was there, right? And there was like this real hunger for something else mm -hmm. in 2019, and I, it was like lightning in a bottle. And yeah. you guys coming in there the fans were so like smart to who like the big names were mm -hmm. 
Right back to the conversation in just a second, but a big thank you to Blue Chew for sponsoring this video and just supporting the channel in general. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. And the best part is it's all done online. So no awkward trips to the doctor, no weird conversations when you're at the pharmacy, you sign up at bluechew.com and then when your package arrives, oh, oh, your package arrives. Blue Chew wants to help you out in the bedroom. Even if you don't need help in the bedroom, my goodness, it really helps to take things up a notch. Go to bluechew.com, use that promo code CVV and your first month is free. You heard me right. That promo code CVV gets you your first month for free. You just have to pay $5 for shipping. It's Blue Chew. Chew it and do it. And I think the one word that best describes Santana and Ortiz is intense. Mm -hmm. And I know this from personal experience. People won't remember this, but I was part of a segment with you guys on like the fifth episode of Dynamite. Mm -hmm. We were in Charleston, West Virginia. I was interviewing <laughs> the Rock and Roll Express in my final AEW segment that I did, which most people don't even remember. <laughs> you guys come out, and I just remember you, you hit Ricky Morton in the back of the head with like a sock filled with pennies, and I'm like, oh, damn. Yeah. And then you guys both get up in my face, and I'm like, I, I, I'm out of here. I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't want any of this. And then you proceed to powerbomb Ricky Morton through, through the stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> I, yo, know, I love Ricky. Every time he sees me, he's like, yo, thank you for like reinvigor reinvigorating our career and all this shit. And I'm like, bro, we almost killed you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I remember like walking through that whole thing and he's like, oh yeah, like make sure, make sure you give it to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He's, he's a pro's pro, man. Yeah. Real veteran. There was, there was so much buzz around you guys and mm -hmm. it's crazy to sit here five years later and think that you never won the AEW Tag Team Championships. What happened? Your guess is as good as mine. Um, I'm gonna be real, I'm gonna shoot straight with you. The reason I was given was that there was too many other people fighting for that spot. And that pissed me off more than anything. Because that that was like, because I. <sighs> it feels when, like you guys would also be fighting for that spot. Yes, and when you and and I understand that when you get to a certain level in this business, if you don't fight for yourself or you don't advocate for yourself, you ain't getting nowhere. And that was a big part of my fight. You know within my, my team. And um, when I heard that, it just validated everything that I was like, all right. Was there ever talk of giving you guys the championship? There was in the beginning, right when um, it was, we were feuding with, the, it was right before the pandemic, right? We were feuding with the Bucks. We were ending our feud with the Bucks. And uh, they both told us, they were like, hey, after this, you're going to go uh, and, and start working a program with uh, Frankie and Scorp at the time that they were still champs. And then you guys are going to grab the belts from them and, and whatever. But then, um, so that was the, the week of New Year's Eve. And then we were supposed to have a match New Year's Day and then start the program with them. We were gonna go into some promos, and then that morning I woke up and got the call that my dad passed away. Mm. So I had to leave. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I left, and then uh, I was gone for two weeks. And in those two weeks, everything changed. And wow. then that was it. And then not long after that, we go into the pandemic style era of wrestling. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, it was a, a crazy time. Yeah. It was a crazy time. So where did the falling out with Ortiz begin then? Uh, you know, uh, well, we were together for 10 years, I think. And, you know, when you're together with someone that long, you know, it's like a married couple, right? There's, there's you know, there's good, there's bad. Um, and I think, honestly, 
for the most part, it was like, I think we just grew apart over time. And also our visions for the tag team and its future and, uh, you know, its success, like it, we weren't on the same page when it came to a lot of those things. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. Everybody has their, their thoughts. Everybody, you know, goes about things differently. Um, but yeah, I'm, like I told you, I'm, I'm a go-getter. I like to create opportunities for myself. I like, I'll, I'm more than willing to fight for our spot. And, um, but also I'm not going to be the only one. So was it that you wanted to do things on your own or that you wanted more for the tag team? I wanted more for the tag team. Mm. And that, that was like, that was the main thing. And, and, uh, again, it just wasn't, how do I say it? It just like our visions just weren't the same. So are you saying that he was happy with what you guys were being given and you're, Mm -hmm. you were saying, I want more than this. Yeah. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. And, um, and then that's when I was like, yo, all right, well, I, this is going to drive me crazy. Like I refuse to be miserable. I refuse. So I think, you know, I want to start doing more single stuff, start challenging myself as a performer, start growing. Um, I, I'm not one that likes to stay stagnant and, uh, you know, that, that was, that was, it wasn't met with a lot of support and there was, uh, it created like a friction and I was like, man, you know, you're my brother. And that, that for me, it was like, all right, it's, we can't do this anymore. Well, then you guys ended up turning into a feud, Yeah. which I don't know. How was that not a pay-per-view match? (laughs) It felt like not, a throw- like I always say, not my show. Felt like a throwaway match on <laughs> Rampage. With great respect to the work that you guys did, mm-hmm. the buildup was there. Obviously, the story's there. Mm-hmm. It feels like it, it should have had more. It should have. Yeah, I mean, it was something that was supposed to go across all three shows. At least when we uh, when we all sat down and planned things out and whatever, and then um, yeah, it just got regulated to one show and. And, uh, yeah, How and did, I was just like, that was another thing that I was like, yeah, I, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> How did you decide you were going to be Mike Santana? So before, before Santana came about, I was known as Mike Drastic on the Indies before getting signed to, uh, to Impact. So, um, yeah, I was like, well... I didn't like how Santana sounded by itself. You didn't want to be like Carlos Santana? <laughs> yeah, nah, I'm good. Yeah. So I was like, I, I'll use the, the, the first name that I used before, you know. And um, that was it. It was not a lot of thought went into that. I, I heard Conan saying like, you should be Miguel uh, Santana. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> ah, he's your boy, you know? Yeah, he should be the barbarian Conan. <laughs> <laughs> so what what bookings are you taking right now? Where, where are we seeing you now? Everywhere. I mean, I've been working closely with House of Glory. That's been a place that's always been like a home for me, um, you know, especially very early on in a career. Uh, they've always given us great opportunities and helped us grow amazing red and Brian, like those dudes are like mentors and, um, always been great dudes. And, um, yeah, to see where the company is now, how they've grown this place. And it's amazing. I mean, they're going to start touring soon and I'm blessed to be a uh, part of that team and, and be on the forefront of taking the, the company on the road and, and stuff like that. So. So you had you had the match with Ortiz. Yep. Then you guys came back together, right? No, we we so we uh, I came back. We did the stadium stampede. Yeah. At Wembley, and then we did the feud, and then I I was off from two years since October. Are so. you are you guys still not okay? Like, is there still heat there? I wouldn't say. I mean, for me, I don't hold any. I told them after the match, I was like, "Yo, I hope the." best for you i hope you do well and there's no hard feelings i hold no hate no grudge nothing like i uh again like i'm in a different place in my life in general and um i'm good 
like do, I'm I'm chilling. Do you not want to be a tag team wrestler anymore right now? No. Yeah, I think it's uh, I'm at a point where I I'm seeking growth and I want I'm 33 now. I'm like right at, at the beginning of my prime years. I want to take full advantage of them, which I I think it's okay yeah, <laughs> for yeah. me to do, you know. Um and yeah, I want to see where it goes. You know, I want to dedicate, I dedicated my half of my career, which was like, you know, 10, 12 years to the tag team. I think it's only right that I dedicate the next 10, 12 years to myself and see where I can go and make the best of it, man. I just want to be happy and have fun doing what I'm doing. Um, again, I went through hell to get back to where I'm at now and, and just be the person that I am. So I want to enjoy it. And I, I refuse to, uh, be miserable and, and just like hate what I'm doing. I might as well just go back to work at a nine to five and fucking, you know, like it is what it is. But, um, yeah, I love this too much, man. Was there ever any interest at any point from WWE? Like now, like recently a at any point. Oh yeah. Like when, when we had, um, uh, when our contracts was coming up with, with TNA, uh, there was interest with AEW and WWE. Like mm. we had spoken to WWE extensively and um, they made it very hard for us to like, not uh, to turn them down, you know? And, uh, but our thing was that we had, so Cody was the one who hired us, right? And we had already, before anything, we had spoke a while back and we had given Cody our word before anything. And our word is everything. Um, so by that point we were like, you know, and, and they, they asked, Hey, have you signed anything? And we're like, no, but we, uh, you know, we gave our word and, and, you know, we, we would like to stick to that. And, and, you know, at the time we both had young children and we wanted to see them grow up and, uh, the schedule was much easier with AEW plus, um, the, the opportunity to be part of history, yeah. be a part of something that was brand new and fresh and be at the ground level. And honestly, like even now I could honestly say like, yo, I was part of that, that legacy and part of that history, no matter what people could always go back and very first show, very first main event, my name is there. So I'm happy with that. Were they saying, was WWE saying you got to move to Orlando? No, they actually said you could stay in New York. Wow. That's how much they were like, yo, we'll pay you this. You could stay in New York. You could like they were making it very, very hard. But you're a man of your word. But I'm a man of my word. Wow. Yeah. What about now? You're a free agent now. Yeah. Would those discussions with WWE come back up? Like could Yeah, I've had I've had some discussions. Okay, yeah. I've been it. I've been very open with everybody. You know, I've I'm uh right now is just um going where where I'm going to be able to grow the most and um and yeah like I don't want to just be another guy on the roster I already did that mm. you know like I I want to be part of something I want to uh do something special you know like thankfully I've been smart with money and and I'm not like hurting and I'm I'm taking my time with things and and you know I just want to have fun would you go back to TNA Everything is on the table. I, mean, I like that. Everything, yeah. yeah. And they're doing great. They are. They are doing amazing. TNA. I mean, wrestling in general yeah, is amazing yeah, right now. Yeah. But TNA being TNA again? Yo. Man. Yeah, yeah. I saw, I remember when when they first dropped that uh, little, um, that hype video with all the guys coming to like the swamp. And I was like, that is the <laughs> coolest thing i've ever seen yo and like frankie coming out of the water like a monster i was like what how like wh what who came up with this it and was they, amazing that was really good i was at that first show hard to kill yeah and like just to be able to you know hear tna chance again i was like yes yep 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 yeah, and they blew it out the water i watched all the shows i oh, was yeah. like man this is this is great. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug, it but is. it only gets so far, right? Like yeah, yeah. You've, you've got to deliver on that. Yep, yep. And they've been delivering. They've been delivering. I mean, look at the squad that they have. They have an amazing team, not just in in uh, in in the ring, but like behind the scenes, man. Yeah. Like they have such a great team and everybody everybody has that that same mindset. Let's 
continue the momentum. Let's keep growing. Let's keep showing why we belong, you know, and um, it's great. Is everything on the table? Everything. Every, what if they say, we want you and Ortiz back together? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everything, uh, like my options are on the table. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, again, like I'm, I'm going to, this one's for me. How deep into the discussions with WWE did you get? Like that was before? it? Yeah, was it gonna be like we're gonna send you to NXT? Did they talk about anything like that? Yeah, I mean they were like, um, you know, you start at NXT and you do a few months there and see how you develop and you know like get you assimilated to to our system and stuff and then, uh, you know, we they were like we don't see you being at NXT more than like a year. And then being called up. And then we knew we were like, yo, if we get called up, we're never going to see our kids, mm. you know, at that time. And, and you know, if we would have done really well, uh, yeah, we, you know, family is everything. At least for me, family is everything. And I wanted to see my daughter grow up because the early years when we were grinding with TNA and on the indies, like we were gone so much. Because at the time, also, well, before... Uh, we got signed to TNA. I was working a nine to five and what were you doing? I was a conference coordinator at a law firm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you Nobody wearing... ever expects that. <laughs> were you wearing suits every yeah, day? Every wow. day. Yeah. Yeah. I was working in Midtown, a big office building. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not just a dumb Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I never said you were. Nah, nah. But uh, no, nah, wow. yeah, that's what I was doing. What What were the cross streets like? How uh, I was on 46 and be in in Sixth Avenue. That's like Times Square almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wow. right right up the block. Yeah. Wow. 1155 Sixth Avenue. What do the people in the office think when you tell them? Oh yeah, on weekends I wrestle. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't tell. Like I was very, I kept it very separate, right? But there was times where I would come in with like a black eye, and like everybody's <laughs> like, "Rough weekend." Yep, <laughs> that's it. That's exactly what it was. Like I didn't really, uh, you know, I've always, I've always been like at home. I don't have no wrestling pictures hung up. I have no like nothing at all. I've always been one to keep it very separate. Like my home life and my professional life is just like also. When I come home, I like to be home. I don't want to like, you know, see all this stuff. Like I live it, Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. there. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, the less distractions while I'm at home, the better. So you mentioned Stadium Stampede. You were part of three of them. I think that's all of them. All of them, yeah. So, I mean, the first one, obviously very different from the other ones because that was in the heart of like no fans and yep. everything. Yep. When you guys were mapping this out... Did you realize you had something special? No. I mean, you've got you've got an NFL stadium. Yeah, yeah. At your disposal. Yeah. I mean, we were we were um, we were doing a lot of things just to pop each other. Honestly, <laughs> like what was it? A fightful posted well yesterday. I think the the no mercy whip. It's that was literally done just as a joke with me and Kenny. Yeah, you and Kenny like, did the no mercy Irish whip yep, yep, to nowhere to nothing. <laughs> just to transit and it transitioned to the next thing. <laughs> That's what it. So. Like we were doing things like that, and then the the bit that we had with Matt Hardy, where he's switching like into all coming his different, out of the water. These these were things that we were just spitballing. Like, yo, it'd be hilarious if we did this, but we had no idea that it was gonna catch on the way it did. Like, we were just, all right, we might as well have fun doing this and make it different. And you know, what's that phrase? It's necessity is the mother of invention. Like. When your back's up against the wall mm -hmm. and you got to come up with something, mm -hmm. you come up with something. And sometimes it's the best stuff in the world. And that's what that ended up being. Exactly. Like, yeah. You, the, it you, was hell putting it together. Though. Really? It was, it was like when we, so we had put it all together the night before. Like we, you know, put together our spots and, and what we were going to do. All right, you're going to be in this world. We're going to be in that world. We, you know, everybody had their worlds. That, that's what uh, we were calling it. And, um, yeah, we, we put it together maybe like four hours maybe, just mapping things out. But then when we were filming, we started – we had to film when it was dark because continuity, right, with the, yeah. the pay-per-view. And um, – so we started filming maybe 
8 p.m. And we didn't, it didn't finish till like 5 a.m. <laughs> and then I got right on a plane back home, like no sleep. We went straight to the airport from the stadium. Wow. Straight back home, yeah. There's not a lot from the pandemic era that's like rewatchable. Cause mm -hmm. it's weird watching wrestling it with is. no fans. Yeah. And then it was slightly better with the wrestlers around the ring, but still it's strange. Yeah. That's something you can go back and rewatch. Like yeah. that and some of the cinematic matches that WWE had, like mm -hmm. pick and choose a few things, but Stadium Stampede's definitely one of them. Yeah, yeah. Like I, the whole storyline with Sammy and <laughs> Oh my God. It was it was a lot of a lot of stuff, man. But it was fun. That for me, that and the parking lot brawl were like two things that th those things will live with me. That know? parking lot brawl was wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think it was it was that good because all four of us were just frustrated mm. you know with not we were like all right we're not gonna get these opportunities we're not gonna be you know put in these positions let's do it ourselves. with that said did you feel like you know it seems like there was a handful of people that felt that way maybe mm -hmm. more than a handful of people mm -hmm. did you like when cody went to wwe were you like yeah i, I could see that coming i knew it was coming I knew I there was I'll be real there was two people that I said off the bat that were going to go back to WWE one of them already did so I was like man and you're saying there's another one that still may go back oh, oh yeah okay yeah <laughs> yeah people are going to wildly speculate on that that's one. fine <laughs> yeah, I, I love having people guessing that's my favorite <laughs> thing to do what was it about Cody and AEW that made you think he's going back it's funny because now, you know, he's doing the whole finish the story thing, right? Um, that's real. That's real. And I always knew that there was a lot more that he needed to do. You know, I knew I knew that AEW wasn't going to be the end all be all for Cody. Uh, we Cody is, I mean, I give him uh a lot of praise man because when my dad died like he was the first person so i found out my dad passed away we were uh at daly's place i flip my sh i'm literally like i got the call and i go outside and i'm flipping my shit like i'm <laughs> tossing guardrails and like i i was having a breakdown literally yeah. and brandy found me and brandy's like what the hell she snatched me up and I, I'm like bawling my eyes out and I tell her what happened and she's like, come with me right now. And she puts me in a room and she's like, stay here, do not move. And she went and got Cody and Cody came and sat with me and he cried with me. Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, I was there for such a very short period of time in AEW, but... Mm -hmm. It seemed to me like Cody was really happy wearing the hat of being one of the EVPs. Like mm -hmm. he was running the production meetings when mm -hmm. I was there. Mm -hmm. It seemed like he was really happy in that role and also doing what he was doing in the ring. Mm -hmm. That's why when these rumors started, I was like, no, like he seems like he's happy being mm -hmm. like in that executive role. And it just seems to me like he really just wanted to be a wrestler. Yeah. There was much more for him to do. Yeah. There was a lot more. And I respect the hell out of him, man. Like, uh, you know, when you when you look at his journey to get to where he's at now, it's name another person who's done it the way he's done it. I mean, when those first reports came out that Cody was going to go from AEW to WWE, I think it was Sean Ross Sapp that reported it. Mm -hmm. And people were like, oh, he's a liar. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know anything. Why would you start this rumor? Mm -hmm. And then it happened. Well then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you say is different about AEW now than when it, when you started in 2019? Uh, a lot of things. Um, for me personally, in my opinion, it and you know, like places change. Places grow. Yeah. That's what they're supposed to do, right? Um, but for me personally, it it didn't have that same feeling that it had in 2019. Like, 
I don't know, like it's, you know, it's hard for me to like pinpoint, you know, there's so many things, like so many different things. It's just a different place in general, you know. But, but I feel like wrestling as a whole right now mm -hmm. is, it's hotter than it's ever been. 100%. As a whole, like 100%. rising tide lifts all ships. Yep. What do you think it is that's made wrestling so hot right now? Like it's like it gets cool to be a wrestling fan again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think uh, the options, the talent. I mean, there's more talent now. Jesus Christ, <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> it's wild. You look at every like company out there. Yeah, there's talent. Yeah, everywhere. Um, it's deep. It's very deep. <laughs> there's wrestling on every day of the week. Yeah. Like that's insane to me, uh, and it's and it's quality wrestling, right? Every everywhere is like producing great stuff, and um, also, like you said, nostalgia is like everybody remembers the Attitude Era. Everybody remembers when wrestling was at its hottest, and they want to relive that. Yeah. Right. And now we we have another uh, boom. Yeah. There's like this resurgence. Yeah. And like. There's, there's hints of like a, a post PG era happening in WWE mm -hmm. right now. Like Cody's calling people a-holes and like little dick energy recently on Raw mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Rock's dropping F-bombs. I'm like, is this the Attitude Era? Yeah. So with all that said, as a singles wrestler now, you look at the landscape, all the rosters are stacked. Mm -hmm. Are there some certain matches that you now want to have now that you're a free agent? Um, honestly, I haven't. Like, since I've been back, I got back in August. I started doing independence in September, October. And I've been, like, wrestling some of the hottest, like, guys, right? Like, uh, um, Brian Keith, um, you know, Cardona. Um, I'm going to wrestle Shelly. Um, you know, so like, all these guys. I, I haven't really pinpointed like oh I, I want to work oh alexander josh is like come on he's literally one of the best in the world right now seriously um and has been for a long time yes i'm so glad people are fi finally starting to realize that oh, like yeah. he's getting the respect and appreciation that he's deserved for a long time 100 percent, 100 percent. um there's i haven't really pinpointed exactly like you know i don't I wouldn't say dream matches or whatever. I've I'm I'm in a groove and in a, a mode now that I just want to challenge myself against the best. If you're one of the best, that's who I want to work with because it's only gonna make me better, right? So if people are only familiar with you as a tag team wrestler, mm -hmm. who's Mike Santana? You gotta wait and see, because <laughs> I I uh, I honestly feel like. And I keep saying it, like, the best is yet to come. Like, I'm just getting started. Like, I've, I've been wrestling 15 years, mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm just starting now. Because it's now where, like, I'm starting to really get it. I'm starting to understand the business, understand myself as a performer. Um, also, like, I say to myself, like, when I think back, I was kind of dealing with addiction for a long time. But it, it just got really bad, like, the last year or so, right? Um, but I look back on things, and I'm like, yo, if I was able to accomplish the things that I, was, I have accomplished, being messed up and not, when I, honestly, not 100%, mm. it scares me the possibilities of what I'm going to be able to accomplish now that I'm, like, I'm there. Mm. Like I'm, I'm, you know, better than I've ever been mentally, physically, uh, emotionally, just in every aspect of my life. Like I am happier than ever. I'm healthier than ever. Um, and I'm excited. Like I'm, yo, <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, like it's been keeping me up at night. Wow. Like that's how excited I am. Is there something you picked up from working so closely with Jericho in the inner circle that, you know, he, he's done everything in wrestling. Mm -hmm. Is there something you picked up from him that you now take with you to the matches you have, to the work you're doing now? Um, I wouldn't say f 
for the matches, I think more business wise and how he conducts business. Yeah, that guy's brilliant. <laughs> he is. He is. Um, but also, he understands the uh, if you don't fight for yourself, nobody's going to fight for you. So you have your own your own back. You know what I mean? And um, and that's one of the things that I, I realized early on working with him, like, you fight for yours, mm. you know, um, advocate for yourself. Um, and, and yeah, like uh, it was it was so cool, like getting to work with him and have that experience in, in the beginning and stuff. And. Um, but yeah, that's that's the main thing, like I. I. I learned more from Jericho watching him interact and conduct business than I did watching him in the ring. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There's like something about the way that he just, I don't know. He's, he's just a good guy. Yeah. And there's a reason he's been doing this 30 plus years. He's figured something out. He knows out. what he's doing. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. And especially at the top level. Right. Yeah. Uh, like you said, he's done everything. Yeah. And I think people <sighs> undersell the fact that he also has a band and he also mm -hmm. has a podcast mm -hmm. and he also has the cruise. He's a hustler. He's a hustler. He's a hustler. What are, what are the matches that you guys had in AEW that fans are always going, oh, when you did that match with, I'm going to guess it's the Bucks mm -hmm. or the Lucha Bros, but what's the what's the match? You know what's crazy? We've never wrestled the Lucha Bros at All Elite Wrestling, ever. Well, that seems like a missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah, you a, guess, a lot you, of things do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I have the image in my mind when you debuted there in the ring, but yeah, yeah. it's not a match. You're right. Nothing. Not once. Well, that seems like a missed opportunity. That's crazy. <laughs> That's insane to me. I don't understand, but not my show. So it's, it's the Bucks then? Uh, the Bucks, um, best friends. Cause we created that, that, uh, you know, parking lot brawl, which like was insane. Um, FTR working with FTR was a lot of fun. Uh, we're very like, like-minded yeah um dax and i you know uh, we related a lot to the fact that we love bret hart and uh yeah but uh favorite bret hart match favorite damn put me on the spot uh there's a few i loved him in austin yeah the first one uh i loved um I, for some reason, like, I love when he worked, like, big guys. Like, him and Bam Bam, amazing matches. And Bam Bam's athleticism is so underrated. Insane. Oh, he's just a big guy. Oh, Insane. No, there's, he's not. There's, like, a match that I saw on one of his DVDs that is, like, it was never tele. It was, like, a match they did in, like, Spain or something. Like, never televised or anything. What the hell? <laughs> like, this guy. Uh, of course, his matches with Mr. Perfect. Oh, those yeah. Insane. Like the King of the Ring one and the SummerSlam one. I mean, come and on. Bulldog. Like, oh, yeah. 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 I, I win, of course. Yes. Look, yes. yes. Bret Hart versus a broomstick. Bret Hart versus anybody. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> yep. He's yep. so, so good. Here's an underrated one. Bret Hart versus one, two, three kid. Yeah. 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 There, look, we're talking Bret about Bret Hart versus Hakushi. Look at this. <laughs> So you guys connected on loving Bret Hart. Yes, yes. I mean, love him or hate him, Bret Hart's one of the greatest ever. No no denying that. And I get that in the 90s, you're a Bret guy or a Sean guy. Yeah, yeah. I can understand that and appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. But if you zoom out just a little bit and you're unbiased about it, how can you not appreciate Bret's work? You can't. I yeah. mean, he he's in, like he's my idol, right? He's the reason why I got into wrestling. He was the first match I've ever seen as a kid. Um also, like for me, you know, and what I do and the realism and the authenticity that I that I bring, uh, you know, I don't I don't consider myself playing a gimmick or a character. I'm me. Right. And I and Brett was the one for me that inspired that. Right. When you look at Brett, he talks about his family, he talks about his morals. He talks about where he's from um, and he talks about being the best. Right. And and that always resonated with me. Like I, I always uh, gravitated towards Brett because as a kid, I was never into like the over the top comic book characters like Hogan and Warrior and stuff. I saw someone that spoke about real life stuff, you know, and that's what like he hooked me. 
it, your character works almost like an actor. It's almost mm -hmm. like, it's almost cinematic. Yeah, yeah. In that it feels like <laughs> the line is very thin yep, yep. between where you as a real person begins and ends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I, uh, cause I channel a lot of my, my personal experiences into what I do. Like I've always done that. Like I, um, every time I, I, I'm standing behind the curtain, I just think of everything that I've been through to get to where I'm at every time. And that's, that's what, uh, has allowed me to bring a, a certain type of like intensity and, and everything to what I do. Like even now, like in my bag, I, uh, I still carry around the, the, the bracelets they, that they put on you in rehab. And I carry those around with me as a reminder. Wow. Everywhere that I go. Is it a reminder of where you came from? Where I came from. And that you don't and, want to go back? And what I could have lost. Hmm. Now I feel like the world's your oyster. Oh, 100%. You've, you've got nothing but opportunities in front of you. 100%. I, I, thank you so much for just being as open as you've been yep. here today. And we talked about doing this over Zoom. It wouldn't have been the same. No, not at so. all. And and again, like I told you, I rarely do these like interviews and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you I'm, really don't. No, I'm very like, uh, I'm private with a lot of things. Like I may open up on social media here and there and stuff. But like when it comes to sitting down and doing these things in front of a camera, like I've always like stood back from a lot of those things. But people are going to see a side of you here that they've never seen before. Yeah. Yeah. You're a, yeah. You're a real human. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and thank you. No, thank, thank you for you. being as open as you have been. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this will resonate with you. I end every interview with gratitude because I wake up every day, I say out loud three things I'm grateful for. And that's just such like a North Star in my life. Mm -hmm. What are three things that you're grateful for? I'm grateful for God. I'm grateful for my family. Um, I'm grateful for the, the, the strength that I, I, um, I still have despite everything that I've been through. Um, if it wasn't for my family, I, I would not be here. Wow. I'm grateful. My daughter, her mother, my grandmother, my mom, you know, my aunts, my uncles, it's everybody, you know, the, the uh, support, you know, that's why, like, you know, addiction runs in my family. You know, my dad was an alcoholic. Um, my grandmother lost two of her brothers to alcoholism. Um, so this disease is, you know, and, and they tell you it's hereditary, right? This is something that I, I was, uh, I guess, born with. Um, so when I was going through my thing, it was like I was so ashamed because I know what my family has been through mm. when it comes to this stuff. And the fact that... Uh, they never turned their back on me. We're glad you're still here, man. Thanks. Appreciate <laughs> you, bro.